Great. Uh, so we're showing off Forge. Forge is um, essentially we took the elements of an MMO that we liked in PvP combat, like the ability sets, so they're not all about damage. They do more than just hurt the opponent. And we brought them into the accessibility and like quick in and out play of a first person shooter. So you find a server, you log in, you play, quit when you're finished. Um, the control scheme is much more similar to a first person shooter as well. At launch, we're going to be starting with five classes. They're the Assassin, which is sort of a hard hitting melee character with a lot of trickster abilities, things that disrupt your opponent's plans. We have the Pathfinder, which is sort of a medium range uh, kiting class. We have the Pyromancer, which is your more traditional long range damage class. They don't really want to get into the mix of fight. We have the Shaman, which is um, a more typical sort of healing and support um, character. And we have the Warden, which is an actual team tank. So not just a personal tank, but they tank for your team. They can uh, reduce damage incoming, that sort of thing. The Pyromancer is built off of most of his abilities either working at a long range or keeping people at a long range. He only has a few sort of close range abilities, um, some of which are meant really for escapes rather than actually doing damage. So we're going to go ahead and load in here showing Forest Ambush. So this is one of our starting maps. Um, it supports Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and um, King of the Hill. This map is about 70% complete in the Alpha stage right now. So it has three levels. You can see enemy kind of coming down from over there. It has three levels. It has the upper walkway, um, which is pretty easy to fall off of. You have the main ground level, which goes over the river and you have a cave system that goes underneath the river as well. So as you're running the flag, let's go ahead and set him on fire with engulf. So you see that he kind of lights up. Damage is coming in, he's firing arrows. I block that one. Um, you can block every, uh, every 10 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and bola him off. So Molten Bola is an ability that, when it strikes an opponent, pins them in place. Oh, I didn't aim it right. All it did was pin him. Um, but if you get three enemies lined up, it'll actually drag them back into each other. He just hit me with pin foot. So one in a block. Yeah, so we're seeing a uh, 1v1 right here, but how many uh, players are these maps designed for? Um, these maps are designed for 8v8 up to 24 versus 24. So okay. our larger maps will support 24 people on each team. Um, but the map that we're looking at here is much more suited for 8v8 through 16 versus 16. So one of the things you can do with the Pyromancer as well is Flame Burst, one of the abilities. When you look down, you can use it to, uh, to, to jump into the air. So if you aim that properly, you can actually manage to make your way up on places you otherwise don't have access to. You also have an ability called Molten Armor, where you set yourself on fire, and every time they hit you, you do damage in an area around. You didn't quite get close enough for that. You can lay a Curse of Flame on them. This ability makes it to where they have to find teammates. Every teammate they have around them after it goes off at that point, they take less damage. But if they can't get to teammates, they take a pretty nasty hit. This ability, you can kind of combo with that one and everything that gets inside of that circle takes damage, all of their allies within that circle. So if you have Curse of Flame and Firestorm on them, they have to decide whether they want to take one for the team or uh, have the team take one for them. And of all the abilities that you have uh, available right here, how many of those are available to you right off the bat and how many of those are unlocked through a, any sort of persistent leveling system? Um, we start you off with nine abilities automatically, so you don't have to unlock any of them. Okay. Um, after launch, we'll be releasing at least one other set for your last eight abilities that you'll be able to unlock through time, but they never have like increased damage or increased effectiveness over the abilities that you already have. Okay. So the goal is to make it to where you have an option, like maybe instead of being able to do this through Flame Burst, you have something that just elevates you by a certain amount. Um, instead. So whether it's more powerful or not depends on the situation you're in, not just the flat-out numbers. And outside of individual matches, is there any sort of larger metagame that uh, tracks your progress or anything like that? Um, not at launch, but we are going to be doing a ranking system that's a little bit different than usual. We're going to be tracking you even when you join pubs. So if you, if you form a team with two of your friends, and you join into a pub server, we'll track, you'll, we'll track you as a three-person team. We just went into camouflage there. Um, we'll track you as a three-person team and rate you um, against other three-person teams that join Pugs as well. Okay. Um, what do you say we check out one of the other classes real quick? Absolutely. So the Assassin is a little more complete. She's about 90% finished. Um, her ability set, she has the ability to go into stealth, which isn't perfect stealth. Um, they can see you if you get too close, and they can hit you out of it even when you're in it. Go ahead and pop out of stealth here. She also has something called, he's going to try to hit me though, um, she can Shadow Leap, 
So you can find a target and just end up appearing right behind him. Now that I have him here, I can take him into the shadow world with me. So what happened is now to his teammates, he would have just disappeared on the map. They can't see him, he can't see them, and the same thing is true for my teammates. He's got me at range, so I'm in a smoke bomb, so he can't fire into the smoke bomb, which gives me time to go back into stealth. Disorienting strike, you'll actually see that I have a little white arc on, my, on my, the circle underneath me, as does he. If that fills all the way, they become stun immune for 30 to 45 seconds. Yeah. So even if you have 16 people just sitting on you stunning, you can only be stunned about 8% of the time, and that would be them doing nothing but stunning you. Um, the other abilities, she has Pantera's Kiss, which is a curse that causes them to need to attack you within five seconds or they take a nasty hit. So the goal there is if you have someone pounding on your tank or your healer or one of your weaker DPS classes, you can curse them with that and they have to decide whether they want to switch targets or take a hit. Um, she also has Puncture, which causes the enemy player to bleed and move more slowly. And up there. And again, the maps are designed for much larger teams, so usually you're not running around looking for a target. Targets are finding you. Are, are the other maps designed in this sort of like multi-tier structure? You have the bottom layer, and then you have this sort of walkway up top? Yeah, most of them have something like that. Um, we've done it. Uh, one of the maps um, that we're planning to launch with has more horizontal layers than vertical, but the other three do have multiple tiers. That way. Um, Capital Siege, for instance, you can run along the rooftops, mm -hmm. or you can fight in the sewers or in the main city itself. Um, and then Yimmel's Throne, um, it has an underground sort of catacombs and a valley, bridges that go underneath it. Then you have the interior with some elevated uh, drawbridges similar to these. All right. Cool. Now, what's the, um, what's the sort of uh, price point that you guys are aiming for with this particular game? So we're going to launch at an indie price range. Um, we don't have a final price set for the uh, game when it goes to retail. But right now on Kickstarter, it's $15 to pre-order. Um, that gives you a copy of the game. After the initial purchase, we will support it through DLC. But DLC for us is not something to where you have, the, somebody else has the content and you don't. Um, the way that it works is that, let's say that we release a new class as part of a DLC package. Everyone will have access to that class for free with the default faction. But the new faction that was introduced with that class is something you'll get for purchase only. And there may be like exclusive skins. So everyone will always be able to play together whether you've bought the DLC or not. But if you really want the new look, um, you'll have to, uh, have to purchase DLC. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for your time. Not a problem. Thank you.